Are you looking to get into triathlons but not sure where to start? Then look no further because in this video I'm going to show you exactly how to structure a training program from the ground up and ensure that you have the best chance of success. There's a lot to think about when it comes to training for a triathlon. Not only are there three different disciplines, but you also have things like open water swims, race nutrition, pool swims, strength work and transitions to consider. Which is why it's a good idea to break your training down into phases to help you focus on the right kinds of workouts at the right times. Doing this also keeps things fresh because you're not doing the same workouts week in and week out. In this video, I'll quickly run through the different phases of triathlon training so that you can structure your own triathlon training easily. There are various ways of doing this and there's no right or wrong, but I use a variation of the phases set out by Joe Friel in his Training Bible books. The prep phase comes at the beginning of your training plan and as the name suggests, it's all about getting prepared to train. I love this phase because after a long break from training, it can be hard to get going again sometimes, but this phase eases you back into the routine of regular exercise in a nice gradual way. The workouts are mostly done at lower intensities with a few short efforts thrown in occasionally, but nothing too difficult. The sessions are shorter than they are in the rest of your training program too. And if you ever have to miss a few, it's not the end of the world at this point. This phase is also the perfect time to try new stuff like a coach swim session, a new indoor bike trainer, or a new run route. And if these things don't work out, that's fine too, because your main goal during this phase is just to get used to regular exercise again. The thing I enjoy about the base phase is that it's an opportunity to gradually build your triathlon fitness without any distractions. It's usually the winter time, and that means there aren't really any races on the horizon. So you don't need to be doing bike to run brick workouts or practicing your race day nutrition or trying to fit into your wetsuit just yet. You can just concentrate on the routine of training and getting fit. The main focus here is on building your endurance by doing low intensity workouts that increase in duration each week. You should also gradually incorporate some higher intensity workouts, starting with moderately hard efforts and eventually building to high intensity efforts towards the end of this 12 week phase. By the time you enter the build phase, your target event is only 10 to 12 weeks away. And the aim of your training now is to develop some race specific fitness. So your training volume and pattern will be broadly similar to the base phase, but you should include some longer efforts at your target race pace, particularly during your longer weekend workouts. You could even take part in some low key races as part of your preparation. I also start introducing a few 10 minute runs off the bike during this phase, just to get used to the feeling of running after cycling. And then in the second half of the build phase, I include some longer bike to run brick sessions to build my experience and confidence. You should also consider doing an open water swim once per week if your target race involves an open water swim. And it's also a good time to start practicing your race day nutrition in training. By the time you get to the peak phase, you're only two or three weeks away from your big race and things are starting to get a bit more exciting. The aim of this phase is to make sure you're feeling increasingly fresh and well prepared without any overhang of residual tiredness. Your workouts should be shorter than before and with an extra rest day each week. The other main difference is that your key workouts should replicate parts of your race. For example, you might do an open water swim with some race paced efforts just to build your experience and confidence. Alternatively, you could do one or two short races, um, such as a sprint triathlon in the first week and a cycle time trial in the second. And you should also practice training in your race day gear so that nothing comes as a surprise on race day. With one week to go before race day, you're entering the race phase. This is all about resting and maintaining your fitness so that you're full of energy in time for your event. So you should keep your workout short and include one or two rest days. Do sprinkle in a couple of short race paced efforts towards the beginning of the week too, and then stick with lower intensity training for the remainder of the week. You can't build any more fitness now, so your goal is to maintain what you already have and make sure you're fully fresh for your event. So once your target event is done and dusted and hopefully it went well, you should take some time to recover physically and mentally. It's always good to have a break from the routine of training and the transition phase is the ideal opportunity for this. You may have more races planned, in which case your transition phase might only last a few weeks, or it might be the end of the season for you, in which case you could take the full eight weeks. But either way, you don't need to be completely sedentary during this phase, but it's also good to avoid hard or structured training and train more by feel. So in conclusion, if you're aiming to do a triathlon, it's a good idea to structure your training into several phases, because this helps keep things fresh and interesting and means you're more likely to do the right kinds of workouts at the right times. And if you'd like more help with this, I've designed over 900 structured training plans, all with rapid coach support. 
Learn more by clicking the link on the screen or in the video description.